And here we are. Here, 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 here we are. So welcome to day two. The the fire trucks are excited. The the police are excited. Everybody's excited. Help me. Nope, I don't want to go that way. Let's go this way. <clears throat> So I'm not distracted by the madness that happens outside this window. All right. Um, so while people are strolling in here, um, why don't you go in the chat and say hello, let us know where you're from, and we will get started here momentarily on this really fun day of tons of fun stuff. Um I will say, um, hello, Mindy. I will say I got, um, how many did I get? I got five. I had five people, um, maybe six. I'm going to have to check. Hello, Nate. Um, I got some great stuff from you guys, um, like since the last little meeting we had here. Um, <clears throat> it was interesting how different everybody's stuff was. Hello, bunny. Um, it was so interesting. We had um, really long poems. We had really short poems. We had um, rhyming poems. We had um, poems that were like very um, descriptive and had a lot of beauty in them. And then we had some poems that were dark as fuck. And um, that was extremely interesting and um I, I really dug it and um i think in a bit we will um i'll read some of them out to you um i'll try to read all of them to you and then like i wrote mine and it's funny because like i initially went into it and i'm like i'm just gonna write like a real short, um, short, sweet to the point kind of poem about this. And then I ended up writing like a hundred lines and I was like, wow, I really, um, really passed what I sought out to do there. <clears throat> so that's pretty hysterical. Oh, oh my God. Okay. So, um, we are getting, closer to noon. First off, does anybody have any questions about anything? Are there any things that you would like to see me go over this week before the uh, main class starts? Uh, I might have to get one more cup of coffee before we start because I poured this full cup of coffee to sit down and have the words with you guys. And um, I can see the bottom of my cup already. And now some dude outside's yelling. Let's see who he's yelling at. Oh, he's yelling at a car. Uh, do you guys ever wish that you could yell at automobiles and have them, like, have feelings about the things you say to them? Man, if I could yell at a car and make a car feel like a bastard... That would be awesome. Not the driver, but the actual fucking car. If I could say, you mother Hubbard, and make that car kind of cry, like you see a tear come out of the headlight, that would be fucking awesome. Hello, Thomas. How are you doing today? <clears throat> um, I am... Some of the stuff we're going to be going over today, um, it's actually serendipitous if that's a word you like to use and you don't get enough opportunity to use it um when i woke up this morning and i was having my coffee and just doing my thing i fell upon a channel 
that um, I've only been watching for probably two months, maybe roughly in there that um, has just really amazing content. And in a little bit, I'll tell you what channel it is. And hopefully you guys can go over there and give her some love because um, she's got a small channel and she puts a lot of work into the um, videos that she produces. But um, she put a video up today about something we're going to be talking about today. And so it was so fucking weird because last night I was like doing the finishing touches on what we were going to do today. <clears throat> and then um, this morning I was kind of going over it and just had YouTube like I was scrolling through it in the background kind of thing to put something on just to have some noise so I could like finish what I was doing. And I saw this video and I'm like, hold up. And I like click on it and I'm watching it and I'm like, Oh my God. Like I am literally typing this stuff out. And now this person's fucking talking about the exact same thing. It, it like, it was like, it like blew my mind a little bit. Okay. With that said, I am going to get another cup of coffee. So, and then we will begin. How are we going to do this? We're going to moonwalk out of here. That probably looked a lot cooler because of the car noise. The car noise. Get your drinks, everybody. This is going to be a doozy. A doozy. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's see how I'm going to do this. See, I was backing up. Do you see how that worked? That is a powerful engine on that chair. Hello, Hannah. Oh, my God. Whew. Here we are. Okay. <clears throat> Today, we are going into bite-sized art. Now, whenever you talk about bite-sized art, you need to do this with your hand because it's horribly annoying to anyone you're talking to. Just kidding. Okay. I think the caffeine has kicked in and the B vitamins have kicked in as well. So I think I'm extra, extra today. <clears throat> so one of the things that I promised you yesterday that we were going to be talking about today is why poetry is the thing we're going to be focusing on here. Why um, poetic anarchy is what I call this whole thing. And um, have that be the thing that I'm always going to. <clears throat> and a lot of this, I need you guys to let me know if you feel these things as well. If you go through these things, this is going to be um, mainly about composition and how things look and how easy it is to create. <clears throat> so um, the reason why I love poetry more than any other form of art is because it's quick. It works with how my brain operates. I, my whole life, okay, I have had tons of ideas. I've always kind of considered myself an idea guy. Like, <clears throat> it's that whole thing, like, um, like Stephen King, for instance, um, Think what you will of his writing. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I am a fan of his ideas. Just like, um, like I like H.P. Lovecraft for his ideas. Um, Anne Rice, I absolutely 
loathe her writing, but the world she created with her vampire books, I think is fucking cool as shit and really well thought out. Ideas are the most precious thing in the fucking world. <clears throat> but like when I was bringing up Stephen King, he said like when he like goes out and drives around, he'll like see something and he'll think to himself, wouldn't it be funny if blankety blank, blank, blank. And that's kind of how ideas pop up to him. And yesterday we were talking about um, your observation into reflection. Okay. And what I want to challenge all of you to do, if you don't do this already, because a lot of you probably already do this, but if, and then that's okay if you don't, but I want to challenge you to do this. Whenever you go anywhere, look at the whole world. Like, don't go outside. And again, this is a thing that helps me in real life. This isn't just about my writing. This is about my anxiety, my depression, all this other shit. This helps me, like, handle this shit. When I go outside and I go to the store or I go to the post office or I go to a movie theater or go to a show or something like that, whenever I go... I'm constantly looking for ideas. I'm looking for what is going to be my next poem, my next story, my next book, my next whatever. I look at all of the people around me and I watch all the things they're doing. And these people doing the things that they're doing, <clears throat> it's almost like their entire purpose of existence is to give me ideas whether um, the chick who's ringing up my groceries um, has a broken nail, um, if somebody walking ahead of me has a horrible limp, if um, an old lady pushing a shopping cart slips on some water and falls down really funny like and the cart falls on top of her, if there is a dog tied up to the the newsstand outside, you know, like all of these things you have to constantly look. I mean, you're a creator. The creating doesn't only happen when you're typing or when you got your pen out, you're writing. The creating happens when you see the fucking world. Everything that happens around you is happening for you to make note of everything. Okay. And then going back to why I like poetry is because I have so many fucking ideas all the fucking time. Like yesterday I was talking about, like, I I make music. I fucking write stories. I write books. I um, make films. I do all these things because I have so many fucking ideas. My idea folder is fucking massive. I have books that I've been wanting to write for fucking years and I haven't got to him yet. And the only reason why I haven't got to him yet is because usually it's because I haven't been able to figure out the correct medium to put that to. So a good example of this is my Black Star series. Um, I started writing that in, uh, I want to say in between like 99 and 2000. That's when, like, the first idea popped into my head. And then um, I started putting it together in 2001. And when I originally put it together, I was putting it together as a film, like one movie, um, and that's how it was. And I did scene cards for it. I wrote um, the pilot, or not the pilot, but the script for it. And it, it wasn't working for me. I didn't like it. I'm like, this is not the right medium for this idea. So then um, some years went by and I'm like, okay, I this should be a TV show. This is better for a TV show. So I wrote a pilot script. And then that didn't feel like it was enough for me. And so years go by again. <clears throat> and then when I saw the Kindle Gold Rush happen... I was like, ah, I could fucking serialize this and put this out like this. And so <clears throat> to me, 
a lot of the reason why a lot of people have ideas that never like get to anything is because I think a lot of people are tricked into the idea. Like if you're a writer, you need to write a novel. So your great novel should be your best idea. And so you have all these ideas and you're like, that's not my best idea. Or I don't know if I'm ready for that to be a novel or I want to make like this great series, you know, like on the scale of game of Thrones. <clears throat> and my idea for that is this idea, <clears throat> but for some reason that idea isn't connecting with the medium you want to put it in. You see what I'm saying? So, um, what we need to do is to be able to like admit that maybe some of the ideas we have don't fit the medium we want to put them in. So what happens when that happens, then you need to figure out where to put that thing. And you can put it in short stories. You can put it into a painting. You could do it into a comic book, whatever the hell you want to do with it. But the other thing is, and if we go back to my black star, um, method with this, you can write it, you can create it any way you want until you find how it fits. Like Black Star was a movie and then a TV pilot and then a serial. And then from that serial, it became five novels. Okay. So you can do something a million times over if you want to be able to find the right place for it. Now I have other like story ideas and everything like that, that I don't know where they go and I've started them in certain ways and haven't been very happy with how those have been turning out. <clears throat> and so I could always like go back and rearrange those if I want. Now, again, back to the poetry, why this is so important is because I can write like 10 poems in a day, let's say, and each poem could be a different genre, could sound completely different, be about a completely different topic. And I could constantly get those ideas out and constantly just be putting stuff here, there, here, there, here, there. And whenever I want to, I can go back and turn that poem into a short story. And then I could take that short story and turn that into a novella. And I could take that novella and turn it into a novel. We can do whatever we want. If you want to take that idea and just make a poem out of it and then just like hard stop it there, you don't ever have to go back to it again. But the thing that you get to do is like exercising those demons. Okay. Now it's kind of funny to refer to your ideas as demons or spirits and shit now. But the fact of the matter is how many of you have had an idea for a story that you have had in your head for fucking years and you always come back to it. You're like, Oh man, you know, if I had time to write, I would write this. And then like, you'll have another, Oh, I found, I have an idea of how to get out of this hole that I thought myself in with this one story, the freedom and the relief you get from putting one of those huge ideas out into just a poem you're free. You have freed that idea. It's out in the world now and you are free from it. And you'll, you'll, when you do something like this, the thing that happens is you understand how serious that idea is. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've had an idea floating in my head for months or years. And I thought it was going to be some big, huge thing. And then like, I write it down as a quick poem and it's gone out of my head and I, I never worry about it again. It's fucking gone because the idea wasn't that deep to begin with. The idea of what I thought I was going to do with it was really deep. But the idea that I actually had for it was fucking shallow as shit. And once I got it out, it was fucking I was done with it. It was gone. OK. And then there's other ideas that I think like are these big ideas? I don't know. I'll write like a little poem about it. And it'll still, there'll still be remnants of it stuck with me. And then I know I need to continue this because this is a bigger idea. This, I have way more invested into this. 
But fuck, if you can exercise those demons out to clear your head out, to clear your slush pile out, to clear your idea folder out, to where the ideas that are still around are the main ideas that you need to fucking chase. The ones that you need to like keep fucking building on. So that is um, a really big reason why I think poetry is so fucking important. Um, the next thing is that if you have a lot going on, if you are super fucking busy, you have a very high stress job, <clears throat> you have um, a lot on your plate. Poetry is great because you can just, you could be at that high stress job. You could be it in that environment. And if you have like three or four minutes of silence out of whatever busy day you have, you could jot something down and just like take a deep breath and breathe that fucker out. And you could just write that down. <clears throat> if you have, um, like a, a family that you're taking care of. If you have kids in the house, if you have, um, if you're taking care of um, elderly parents or grandparents or anything like that. Again, this is really quick. Your creativity is flowing. And when water flows, it's very easy to have that water. Like if you like turn on the sink in the kitchen, you could turn it on a little and it'll just trickle out. And if you if you clog that sink, even with that little trickle of water, soon that sink will fill. Okay. But that sink will not fill with water if you don't turn the fucking tap on. So no matter how hard that flow is going, if that sink is turned on, you will fucking get a fucking sink full of water. Now, this is also really big. And this is where um, my thing kind of comes from. Um, if you have like ADD or ADHD or any kind of mania or any kind of, um, mental health issue or disorder that makes concentrating on things for long periods of time difficult, poetry is your fucking savior. Like I can't stress enough. And when we get into the big class we're going to really be talking about using writing as therapy because if I didn't have um, poetry, like when, let me hold this, let me, let me whip this thing out. If I didn't have poetry, like the time around my life when I wrote this book, the end of everything, fucking the most like, <laughs> it's like, this is very serious shit guys. If I didn't have fucking poetry then, like, I'm sure I would have fucking ended it all, dude. Like, literally. Like, um, that was a very dark period in my life. And it was funny because I it didn't really seem like my life was that dark at that moment. But inside, I was done. Like, inside my head, inside my soul, I thought I was fucking completely done. Like, I give up, surrender, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Um, <clears throat> and so writing the words that became that book was the thing that kept me from doing something fucking stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, like, writing in general is really helpful. And writing poetry is even more helpful because you could hit a bunch of topics quickly. So for just a mental health thing, poetry is so fucking crucial to your mental health. Like I wish like, honestly, like when you go to therapy and I know therapists sometimes will say like, Oh yeah, you know, keep a journal dude, like fucking write therapy, cut yourself with that pen, bleed on those fucking pages. That is your fucking pain. That is your anguish. This is your fucking life. This is your soul. That would be so fucking helpful. Like, they should teach that shit in school, dude. I swear to fucking God. Anyway. Um, so the other thing that makes this great is um, if you are one who does this, you can take these, like, short, quick bursts of energy and get so much done and take that 
weight of the idea folder and the slush pile off of your shoulders. And it, like <clears throat> when I talk to students who take these courses with me, it comes up a lot that um, so many people have been trying for so long to get their writing career off the ground or anything like that, that the their ideas feel like a fucking boulder on their shoulders. Okay. There's so fucking many of them and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it feels like it's almost like crushing them. And the way like I've always looked at it is that your ideas are like fucking like balloons, like full of helium. And, and so like the more ideas you have, the more flight you have, you know? Um, and I think it's kind of like a mindset thing. Like you should never feel crushed by your ideas because your ideas are a fucking gift. You know, like you have ideas that no one else has. Like, yeah, some of your ideas might sound similar to this, that, and the other. Some of your ideas might be inspired by this, that, and the other. But again, when we go to um, how we observe the world through our eyes and everyone's different, everyone's a snowflake um, and all that shit, you give something back that has never been seen the way you see it. So going through that whole uniqueness and all this other stuff, all of these things, the, the plethora of ideas you have, the way you see the world, being able to put those out in short bursts of like, just mm, energy. It's fucking great. It's kind of like, like Bruce Lee, if you want to get fucking, real in the weeds here. Like he could like knock you out with like a one inch punch, like boom, and then you're done. You know, um, he could take all that energy through his whole body and just go and that, and that's it. And you're out, uh, you're gone. Okay. Like you don't have to do all this like crazy hard fucking work. And it, if you like, let's go back to, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. The guy comes out with the scimitar and he's like swinging it and swinging it, doing all this crazy stuff. And everyone's like, oh, shit, here comes fucking sword, man. And Indy's like, oh, OK. And he just like pulls his gun out and shoots him. Quick bursts of energy like solves the problem. <laughs> That's such a bad fucking analogy. I hope that worked for you guys. Um, so, again, with this bite size art, anybody can do it. It could be as long as you want. Um <clears throat> but just make it as long as you have time for it in that second, in that moment, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to like decide like, like for instance, like last night when I was writing my, what was the happiest day in my life poem? I'm like, I'm going to just write like five or six lines. And I ended up writing a hundred lines because I had the time to do that right then. Um, <clears throat> and creating every day, this helps that along because in order to, just get in the habit of knowing you're a creator, that you're a mad scientist, that you could do these things. You're a fucking chef, okay? You create these things every day. So if you are creating smaller things, you automatically feel like you're getting more done. And when you feel like you're getting more done, that boosts your self-esteem, that boosts your confidence. You're like, shit, I could fucking do anything, dude. You see how many fucking ideas I just put to paper today? Like I could fucking do anything. You know, so all that shit, <clears throat> is really, really very valuable. Um, now, um, the channel that um, the channel that I was talking to you guys about earlier um, is a channel called Slady V. What I think I'll do, because um, it took me a minute to, like every time I was like searching for it once I found it and then couldn't find it again, I kept spelling it wrong, but um, I will link the channel in the description of this video after the video is done. <clears throat> oh, did you watch that video, Mindy? That's so fucking awesome. That's great. Okay, so um, she had that video, and then in that video, she referenced another video, and now I can't remember, and Bunny's read her stuff. That's great. Um, if you guys could put in the chat, like, how to spell her channel name, just so everyone can see it who's here, that would be very helpful. <clears throat> so, um, I can't remember which video was which, but um, I'll tackle the writer's block thing. Um, 
so she had a writer's block video and in this video um she was talking about an article she wrote about how you hear all the time from these authors like you know i wrote every day for hours on end and i really just gave it my all and blah 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 and that's how i made it i strived for success and blah 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 blah, blah, blah whatever <clears throat> and um she was saying in her article that this is kind of like impossible because not everyone can do the things that this author does and um there are a few things here that I want everyone to understand when you see these fluff pieces or articles about these authors saying stuff like this. First off, um, there you go. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you. Um, Mindy just put the name of the channel in the chat if you guys are interested. Um, the, the couple things here is that authors fucking lie they lie all the fucking time why do they lie they might not mean to do it but they're fucking writers who write fucking fiction they make up stories all the fucking time so when you read about a writer who does all this shit and you're like fuck i wish i could be like that writer god damn it that writer has such fucking drive and blah 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 blah, blah. and you and you feel like this <clears throat> It's almost as if you're supposed to feel like that. You're supposed to feel like you can't do this impossible thing that this writer did. And that's what separates you from the greats. Because the greats can do this all the fucking time and you can't. Okay? And I know a lot of authors. I know a lot of authors who are published with big publishers. And I have talked to them. And they say all the time like yeah like i i remember because i always ask i'm like oh so do you really like write every day for 12 hours or something like that and they'll go well i mean not like every day obviously you know and like sometimes their days are shorter than others you know and then life happens and you know if like if there's like a birthday or like a vacation or you know and then all of a sudden there's all these fucking excuses and when you start like adding all that shit up you're like oh you write just like everybody fucking else writes, you fucking dumbass. And so it's not that big of a fucking thing. But, and then you're like, but why do they fucking lie so heavy on some of this shit? And this is where the second part comes into it. When you see these like articles and these like video interviews or whatever of these big authors, those are being put together by a PR machine from that publisher to try to build awareness about this author and the author's new book. Now, what is a better story? They are human after all. Exactly. So what's a better story? <clears throat> a story about a writer who picked themselves up by their bootstraps and despite everything that fucking wrote every goddamn day for millions of fucking hours to achieve that dream or is it more interesting to say, uh, yeah, I was kind of drunk all the time and I might have, I wrote a little bit, um, went to Taco Bell a lot and yeah, I mean, I kind of wrote like maybe a page a day, maybe sometimes like what story is better. The reason why they do it like this and tell you the story, it's the same idea with the hero's journey. And if you don't know what the hero's journey is, you could Google it. But it's basically the story of a <clears throat> character um, going along, finding his purpose, deciding if they're going to fight the evil and bringing it all back around and then coming home. <clears throat> it is a um, literary device. Okay. And when you watch these interviews or even read these interviews, you will see that the interview itself follows the fucking hero's journey. And you're like, oh my fucking God, they're just fucking telling me Sunday school right here, dude. What the fuck? And then you realize that you're the whole thing. Um, some drunken Taco Bell trips could make a good story. That's what I'm saying. Like for fuck's sake, dude, like 
send me to Taco Bell while I'm drunk and you, you got yourself a fucking bestseller. But anyway, so my whole point of this is, is I don't want you guys to ever feel like inadequate or feel like, oh, that's why I'm not there. That's why I'm not where that person is. So much of every industry in the world is based on who you know, um, how much money you're willing to spend on promotion. Because I'm guaranteeing you guys right now, everyone in this chat, if you have the money to spend on marketing and promotion and hiring a PR firm and getting um, a marketing agency to even like do something with your self-published book, you will be a bestseller um, as soon as that book comes out. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. It happens with people all the fucking time. You don't have to be like the greatest writer who ever lived, you know? And again, that's all fucking subjective anyway. But <clears throat> who you know and how much money you have to spend on the things that you um, are putting out there, that's really what success is. Like, we have this, like, weird thought that, like, these certain things are completely unattainable. Like, oh, shit, I don't know if I could reach that level of um, success because blah, 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 blah. And again, like, a lot of us will go, but you know what? That's not really how, like, Stephen King got popular or, like, Daniel Steele or, like, Agatha Christie. And you start naming all these people and you'll realize that all these people you're naming are people from, like, 30, 40, 50 plus years ago. The world is a completely fucking different place. The world's like this. Like everything has to be like right now, what's big right now, what's trending right now. And right now, if you have the money to make those things happen, the world is your fucking oyster. And that's not like a pessimistic view on it. It's how it fucking is. Anybody can have anything if they have the money to fucking pay for it. So that's not to make you feel bad that you don't have the money to pay for it. Because again, all of this is you can do things totally the opposite way too. And if you build that base, if you build that fan base over a long period of time, you will get those trending things, hashtag things, blah, 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 blah. And you get those things organically. So Everyone goes the same route. It's the speed at how that gets there. <clears throat> I kind of went on a ridiculous um, rabbit trail there, but that's okay. So um, we went over um, the importance of making things small and just kind of doing it. So what I really would like to see you guys do is try to work on if you guys have an idea pile um if you guys have like just thoughts that you've always kind of wanted to see how they would turn out what i want you guys to do this time is grab some of those ideas and try to make the shortest poems possible to tell the story of those ideas and i know a lot of you will be going i can't do that because of the the um shared consciousness of creators and if i write something down in three months i'm gonna hear that there's a movie in development based off of the exact idea i have now if you guys want to talk about the collective conscious and the collective creative conscious consciousness and all that stuff we can talk about that but the thing is again everyone is very fucking unique Everyone sees things their own way. So the idea that you have right now, if people wanted to and just try to make your life a living hell, we can all look at those ideas and we could probably find five movies, books, TV shows or whatever that we can say, oh, that's just this. Okay. But it all depends on how you tell that story. So don't worry about that thing because they're like, like Ecclesiastes says, there's nothing new under the sun. And again, we'll, 
this whole bit we will be talking about in the main class. But so I want you to just start thinking, like going through, go through your mind, go through your your file, and think of ideas that you've been waiting on that you would like to like exercise from your body. Get those demons out. Get those ghosts out. Make little tiny pieces of art. <clears throat> Write like three line poems, four line poems. Just see if you can do it. Um, another thing is too, if you don't want to write something out, try to make something little, just make something little. Like I have little tiny mini zines, you know, like little tiny things. Um, those took not much time to make. Um, I, it did take me a while to figure out how to fix my scanner. That was a whole other issue, but just make little tiny bits of art and create every day. And again, it doesn't have to be um, your magnum opus. <clears throat> Only got a few minutes. Hello, man. How are you doing? Um, so first off, before we go any farther, does anyone have any questions about anything? And while we are doing that, I'm going to see if, actually, I can't do that here, so I'm going to have to do it on my phone. <clears throat> so, if you guys have some questions um, or comments, even, um, put them in the chat. I am looking for some stuff here. Where is it? Nope, 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 nope. How come I can't find it? Is this it? Okay. So what I'm going to do right now, um, I'm going to um, read one of the, oh wait, Thomas says, so our assignment is to create some poems or shorts with some of our ideas. Um. Here is how I will say it like this. If you want to do some shorts with it, that's fine. Um, that's actually really fucking helpful. Like, just on a writing um, level. But the stuff I want you to turn in, if you can turn stuff in, would be some poems based off of some of the ideas you have. And try to make those poems, like, as short as possible. Like three lines, four lines, whatever. Just little ideas based off of what those things are. So if you have to think of like, what was the theme of this idea I had? What was the um, the point I was trying to get across when I was putting this idea together? Just start doing that to see if any of that frees you from some of those ideas. Um, another thing, too, is like, especially if you're wanting to do short stories with this, um, a lot of times the reason why some of our ideas don't connect as um, something that could be finished is because um, <clears throat> is because uh, your ideas aren't flushed out enough. There's not enough meat there to create anything with it. So when you get like two or three of your ideas that you have that you think are completely separate things, merge those three together. So if it has to be something like um, one character is one story, another character is another story, and another character is another story. Now you have to make a story where these three characters like intersect somehow that maybe they're family, maybe they're friends. And now all of a sudden you have this big fucking like blooming fucking flower of all these separate ideas that could, you could write like a wraparound 
that goes throughout the whole story <clears throat> to connect all that stuff together. So again, like that idea I just told you right there with like the different things, that's just advice to see if you can do that. And if you can do that, if that inspires you to try that right now, then fucking go do that. But for the class itself, try to come up with some of those ideas and make them into just small bite-sized little things just to get them out of your system to make you um to get your mind going on those things okay i got to turn off my um text messages thing here because um i was getting bombarded by texts that were popping up on my computer and i was like uh and i don't have enough uh I can't focus on so many things. That was like freaking me out here. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to read um, one poem while I'm waiting for more questions. And um, this one is from Mindy. Okay. This is called True Beauty. Um, and there were some edits that were done and some back and forth. So I don't know if this is the actual finished one. But I want you to see the, like, how real, how much you can touch of this poem. The happiest day in my life was in the middle of an open field, many miles from anywhere, lying on my back, the feel of the dry grass scratching my neck. The cool fall air gave goosebumps this late hour. For the first time, witnessing the beauty of the Wyoming night sky, surrounded by new friends, sharing the magnificence of a million stars brighter than anything. Is this real? It is otherworldly. Hours past the awe didn't lessen. Sorry if um, asshole trash truck ruined that poem <clears throat> but that poem like you feel the grass scratching your neck you feel that cool air you see those stars this is how you you put that out this is how you make somebody feel the thing that you're talking about if you understand what i'm saying <clears throat> so mindy i hope i didn't butcher that for you my ideas that have been stuck in my head forever are super dark. <clears throat> um, good. Like, it sounds like you need to get those out of your head or else um, your head will continue to be a super dark place. Um, get those out. Just try it. Throw some, throw some fucking spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Um, that is also how to do that and as far as the other lesson for today the other homework assignment is when you go out everything out there is there is an idea is a potential idea for you to tell a story okay every single thing every building every person every animal every bit of weather is there just for you to create something Okay, like we're, we're talking some Truman Show shit here, okay? Nothing is real. Everything is fake, and it's all set up for your enjoyment, your amusement. Oh, my God, that's crazy. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to find another one here. That's beautiful. I can imagine being there just through the amount of imagery included. Exactly, exactly. Um, let's see. I don't know what that email is. I'm getting strange emails from strange places. Okay. Um, and this one's really fun too. This is, um, from Thomas. Um, you can ruin a wet dream. My son coming into the world was a happy time. A moron could understand that. To see him come into my life, I was so happy. A dumbass was on the phone. Couldn't even pronounce my son's name. 
What a fucking idiot. This was my son. I was elated with joy, paralyzed by fear. What did I get myself into? Little did I know I was about to be betrayed by the moron on the phone and her co cohort holding our son. <clears throat> now, the things about this poem that are fucking crazy is that, like, we see the happiness. We see the joy. We see, like, like oh, this is an, an amazing time. <clears throat> and then we go from, I was elated with joy to paralyzed by fear. The whole tone switches, just goes, just like that. Um, what did I get myself into? And so we have this whole thing where this is happy. Now this is fucking terrifying. Then we have this other bit that like, seriously, this whole poem right here could be like the opening line to a fucking novel. <clears throat> because now we have this promise given little did I know I was about to be betrayed by the moron on the phone and her cohort holding our son. Like this is fucking like almost like Chekhov's gun. Like if you put this at the beginning of this story and then all of a sudden, like you're fucking nine months in the past, here's the fucking story. And the whole story is getting up to this point. That's what you did here. I don't know if you intended to do it like that, but that's what it is. I would have liked to see more of the, the fear part, at least as long um, or as much space taken up as the um, the happiness bit. Um, like when it goes, I was elated with joy, paralyzed by fear. What did I get myself into? Like a little more of that and then hit this part. Because now all anyone wants to know in reading this poem is this last bit. What the fuck is he talking about? How was he betrayed? Who was holding the sun? Like what's happening right now? So um, the poem you brought out, instead of instead of necessarily showing us and letting us feel all of these things, it's more of a prose style where now you hooked us. Like, we are all hooked now. What the fuck happened, bro? Like, answer the fucking question. <laughs> So that's that's amazing because getting people excited to see what happens next to turn the page, um, whether it's poems, short stories, whatever, novels, like that is that is almost one of those things that can't be taught. Like um getting somebody to know how to hook people to flip the page. And this is why a lot of big publishers have um content editors, because a lot of novelists do not know how to fucking do this. So they'll have people go through the book and their whole fucking goal is to make the book an addictive read. So they will add stuff. They will move stuff around in chapters to make people turn to that next page to get to that next chapter and want to continue going. Um, I love that reaction. Yes, I am intrigued. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. Um, and again, any questions you guys have? <laughs> Such a great cliffhanger. Yeah, dude. Um, cliffhanger poetry. That's some shit right there, dude. Um, let's see. Oh, wait. What does that do? What did I just do? I've never done that before. I think my Gmail updated. I pushed something and something happened that I've never seen happen before. Um. Okay, so this one is a bit longer. Let me see. How can I do this? Okay, I'm going to try to read um, Nathan's poem here. Um, and it's it rhymes. And so I'm going to try not to sing song it. I'm going to try to just read it. Um, because I feel like if I sing song it, it's going to take away from it. So the happiest day of my life was on October the 9th. I jumped out of bed and reshaved my head, showered, dressed, all looking my best. I made my way into town. The bus was on time, early autumn sunshine. In brown beige tweed, my nerves wouldn't seed. I followed my feet, and where did they lead? Straight into my friend Joe. He wasn't initially invited, but I got drunk and scared he'd feel slighted. 
no card or note, Joe, the top bloke, remembered the date and was and not to be late. We bust together in haste. The ride ends at the gates of Wallaton Hall, a royal estate in Wayne Manor. Atop a huge grassy hill, my nerves plague me still. Walking my knees start to tremor, tremor. Yet, his effect on me was so calming. It was just what I needed as my nerves finally seated while walking the grounds as we come around, me and Joe, face to face with the doe. I joked we should go. My day had been made, but this was just the beginning because the happiest day of my life was on October the 9th, the day I married my wife. Now, I am not a huge fan of rhyme, and I will tell you why. Um, and this is one of those things that, um, we will go into in the, in the class, but as soon as you fall into any kind of form of any kind, as soon as you do that, you immediately open up your subjective art to objective eyes and your subjective work is now an objective piece. People now have a criteria to where they could judge this objectively and with art to me art should never fucking be judged objectively art should be i either like it or i don't this is for me or it's not but to objectively judge someone's work i think is fucking horrific and nobody should ever fucking do that so with that said when you start rhyming people will start watching what your rhyme scheme is. They will start checking to see if um, this word is a good rhyme with this word, if this word has been used before. Um, and then like with me, when I read rhyming poetry, I get this thing where I start anticipating what word would be a good word to rhyme to next. And sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised and sometimes I'm not. But when you start doing that, you start losing the um, the focus goes away from what you said and goes into how you said. And I'm not a big fan of how you said. I'm a fan of what you said. So with that said, going over what he did here in this poem was fucking amazing because he's like, this is the best day of my life. I'm going to tell you all about it. And then you go through this whole thing that seems very kind of mundane and very ordinary. And so people reading it are like, how is this the best day of his life? I don't get it. Like how, like, and, and people are going, they're looking for it. They're looking for it. They're like, something's got to happen. Like, how is this the best day? And then at the very end, you're like, oh yeah. And this is when I got married. And everyone's like, oh, shit. I see what he did there. He wrote a poem about the his the happiest day in his life and didn't really tell us the big happy part. He told us a cool part that happened that same day. That's fucking genius. So, um, Nate, I fucking love that that's how you fucking did that. Like, that was fucking spot on shit right there. Good, good, good. And honestly, I will say this, you, you won on some of your rhyme schemes there, dude, like where I'm like, oh, the next word's going to be this. And it wasn't, and it was a better word than I, <laughs> than I thought of. And I'm like, oh, motherfucker, look at him fucking pulling some shit out, making me look dumb. Um, so that was some shit. I like that. Okay. Um, Oh, thank you for sending it, man. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm going to read Hannah's here now, too. Um, and this one is really cool, and you'll see why almost immediately. The happiest day in my life will be the day I finally escape. When the darkest clouds stop following me, once the shackles grant liberty... After the black dogs lose their way instead of following me. Every day I see colors, 
but they're all muted and dazed. The worst is the glaring gray, disturbed by my everyday gaze. I wait for the day when the outside doesn't scare me. A moment when the inside doesn't make me afraid. I wait for the day my thoughts are collected instead of scattered across the floor. On that day, I will run with the rainbows, find the pot of dreams underneath. I'll finally feel the sunshine on my skin, be able to embrace the rainstorms underneath. The happiest day in my life will be the day I'm finally free. Now, this is cool um, because if you remember, I was saying like when you do the happiest day in your life, it could be the happiest day in my life was, the happiest day in my life is, the happiest day in my life will be. Like it doesn't have to be in the past. And Hannah hit this in the future. This poem sounds really fucking dark, but this poem is just hope. What this poem is, no matter how fucking dark this sounds, this is light at the end of the tunnel. That's fucking epic to take something dark as shit and make it a hopeful poem where like when you are done reading it, you feel uplifted that you read all of this fucking horrible, dark, gloomy shit. How do you do that? That's fucking... That's taking something and turning it. And the other thing that I really like here is this. Um, I can't remember what it's called. This is actually called something where you take the first line of your poem, like the happiest day in my life will be the day I finally escape and then bring it back. And that's the last line of the poem. I can't remember what that's called. doesn't matter how you did it was very awesome. I love it. So Hannah, very good job there. Um, and then I do have one more that was not emailed to me. It was messaged over to me. Uh, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Where did I put the thing? Okay. Um, and this is from Sarah. And Sarah sent me, I think, three poems. Um Two of them were poems that she was writing um, while the class was going on, I guess. Um, just two little quick ones that were actually quite hysterical. Um, but um, this is the happiest day in my life poem. And this is um, printed out on paper. So like some of the words I might fuck up because I can't really read it. Um, Okay, the first time I saw the ocean, surrounded by mountains and rivers and lakes. My home is beautiful, but this new sight overwhelmed me. So much I forgot my home entirely. After that family vacation, I continued to constantly obsess about the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the only ocean there was in my opinion. Then as I grew, I learned of other oceans, more beautiful, the happiest day of my life. Oh, wait, wrong way. Sorry. Was the day I realized, I realized, I realized that everywhere I go may or may not be the most beautiful, may not be beautiful at all. But my own thoughts of what beauty is has changed so much through the years. I find myself seeing beauty in more places than I used to. So I figure it's safe to say that beauty is everywhere. It's just hard to see it when your eyes are wearing glasses. Oh, oh sorry. I went to the next page, um, that your eyes are wearing glasses that belong to someone that no longer wears that prescription. So this is like a very, like, I wanted to include this one in here because it's very stream of conscious. It's, um, very like beat style. Like you start writing 
and you're going. So in this poem, Sarah changed what the happiest day in her life was. The happiest day in her life was when she saw the Atlantic Ocean. It was the most beautiful thing she ever saw. But then the happiest day in her life is when she realized that lots of things are beautiful and she could see lots of things. Um, and then it goes from there into the um, analogy with the prescription glasses. Um, I really dug that a lot. So everybody, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, I I could, oh shit, am I going to read mine? Okay, let me let me read mine here too real quick. Because a like I said earlier, I just started going. Oh wait, no, it's up here. Okay, where did it fucking go? Oh, here we go. Okay, the happiest day in my life. Eight centimeters, just too short. They sent us home again. We had to wait until 10 centimeters. How the fuck am I supposed to measure that? Playing risk, listening to Willie Nelson. It seemed to be happening again. This time, it was the time. They took us to the top floor. They said the baby was coming, but told me I had to rush to admin and check in. It was on the other side of the hospital, first floor. I ran faster than ever, dripping sweat, out of breath. I wasn't going to miss this. I wasn't going to miss the birth of my child. I screamed at someone, ran back, could barely breathe. It's crowning, a nurse yelled. She had her hand up the canal, holding the baby in place. The doctor wasn't there and wasn't going to make it. I apparently turned white when I saw the hairy head come out of that hairy snatch. Another doctor comes in, does the thing. The woman is squeezing my hand. It may have been broken. I didn't know then, and I don't remember now. The baby came out. The baby was early. The nurses were rushing to take it to ICU. I walked behind them, watched them check. I counted fingers and toes, looked back at the woman in time to watch the placenta fall into a mop bucket. They quickly let us hold the baby, the baby that I had been trying to make sure would make it into this world alive. Someone snapped a pic of that first time I held my child. <clears throat> For that, I'm glad. Those seven months were the most stressful of my life. The kid that every doctor said wouldn't make it, made it. Um, I spent many hours with my child in that ICU, placing my pinky in her tiny hand, looking into her strange eyes, in shock that she was finally here and okay. Unchained Melody, ah, uh, Unchained Melody played. I sang it to her, she smiled. I know she probably didn't mean to but I like to think that she did. Holy shit. Sorry, guys. Um, that was a bit heavy. Oh, my God. That was crazy. But, yeah. So, um, uh, happiest day, you know. Yeah. So, um, I hadn't read that yet, so um, I just wrote it out. Hugs. Thanks, guys. You guys are being very sweet, and I appreciate it. Uh, honestly, that's, like, probably the one subject that um, fucking gets me um, every time. And I want you guys to understand something about how important your art is. Okay, that poem was not well written. That poem was very flawed in how it was made. Okay, you guys are 
being very like that was beautiful and stuff like that and i appreciate that but i feel like the reason why anyone would like that poem isn't because of what i did in the poem to make it a poem you guys feel for it because i was open with you i <clears throat> i opened up and showed my insides to you guys i was being honest with my words you know and again when you read things aloud it is different than when you just read it. Just like when I read your guys' poems, I don't have the, like, I don't have these things as life experiences. Your your poetry are, are not my experiences. So I can't share them the way you guys would be able to share them. The way you guys would speak those out, speak them into existence for us to hear, would be so different than how I do it, okay? Not how I read mine, but how you read yours. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about, like, me reading yours would not have the same effect as you reading yours. Um... And honestly, on a side note, I think that's why um, reading poetry about like civil rights or gay rights and stuff like that, like a lot of the stuff that was coming out in the late 50s and 60s. That's why a lot of that poetry hits so hard because the people sharing that, that poetry were going through brutal fucking shit. And it's not as um, like my kid makes me cry all the fucking time. Like my kid can fucking like do something that most parents would fucking crucify their kids for. And then I'll just start fucking blubbering. Like my kid is like my fucking kryptonite. But um, when the stuff you write about is your kryptonite, let's say, is the thing that um, your soul just spills for, that is uh, really tricky. Like, it's, it's tricky because you're really fucking opening yourself up. But when you open yourself up like that, when you talk to your audience, when you when you talk to your readers, like they're your best friend, you know, like it's different than when you just construct a good poem. And I mean, there's tons of books out there, tons of poetry out there from every fucking academic journal you can fucking imagine where people write good form poems, but not really many of those poems are going to connect with anybody. Not many of those poems are going to make anyone feel a fucking thing. Okay. And I'm not trying to say, um, Oh, hello, Rory. That's cool. That's cool. And you could always rewind or whatever and go back. But anyway, I'm not trying to say every poem should fucking, you want to try to make everybody cry. But I'm trying to go back to this whole thing where if you're honest with yourself, if you're honest about your feelings, if you're honest about your words, that shit will come through. Like Mindy's poem. Like we all felt that amazing thing Mindy felt. We all saw those stars with um, Thomas's poem. We all saw the, the change in fucking joy to fucking panic to what the fuck is happening now we all felt that and we felt it quick um we all got um tricked by nate we all got this like this weird poem where 
these things are happening and we know it's supposed to be happy, but why is this happy? And then whoop, yeah, it is happy because this happened, motherfucker. Like we we did that. And then with Hannah, we got this fucking dark, gloomy fucking poem that was a big fucking beacon of fucking light at the end of a tunnel. We all did the assignment and we did it in a different way. And then Sarah's where halfway through the poem, she decided, you know what? No, that wasn't the happiest day in my life, bitches. Let me fucking tell you what was and why. And um, when we do these things again, like this is why a little bit stream of conscious feels more relatable because stream of consciousness sounds conversational. The more conversational your poetry is, the more it feels <laughs> relatable to the person who's reading it and feels more like um, just talking to a fucking friend, dude, just talking to an old fucking friend. Do you guys have those friends where like, you don't talk to them for like a year, two years, and then you fucking get them on the phone and it's like, nothing has fucking changed. And you are like right back there. And you're just like fucking talking. Like you have not skipped a beat. That is how a lot of your poetry should feel. That is how readers want to feel when they come back to you. And honestly, let's think about this for a second. Think about the, um, the, uh, the writers you love, the um, authors you love. When you haven't read one of their books in a while, when you go back to it, do you feel like you're talking to an old friend? Because I sure fucking do. Every time I fucking pick up a Vonnegut book, after not picking up Vonnegut for a while, I feel like one of my old buddies is telling me fucking jokes. Um, I fucking read Bukowski a lot because, like, he's so fucking conversational. It's like I'm just having a drink with my buddy, and I just sit there and I read, and he tells me about his day, you know? And then I will go and type and tell him about my day and write myself a poem and, and to go, okay, Mr. Bukowski, read read this poem now because we're buddies, you know, like that whole fucking thing. Um, Hunter S. Thompson. I don't like all of Hunter S. Thompson stuff, but like when I read Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, I feel like I'm talking to an old friend. And that's why I fucking go back and read that all the time. I keep going back to it because like I feel like um, that to me is conversational. And readers want to feel. That's why readers fucking hate when a series they love ends because they're like, what do I fucking do now? God damn it. Stephanie Meyer. How dare you fucking end this goddamn thing? Get back and write more of it. Okay. I guess. Fuck. I don't know. Um, same thing with like Sherlock Holmes. When um, Arthur Conan Doyle fucking killed off Sherlock Holmes, he did it because he was fucking done and he didn't want to fucking write about it anymore. And the fucking, the audience, the newspaper, everyone, the money, was all telling him, bitch, get back here and fucking finish that off because we love that and we don't want it to go. You know, it's like um, the whole fucking thing. Let's see. I loved all the poems and that they were so different. They were so different and that's what's fucking awesome. You guys all were told the same thing and you guys all came up with something totally different. And the thing that I thought was the most strange about the whole thing wasn't the fact that they all sounded different, but that they were all different. Like they were all written in different styles. They were all written in different formats. Um, I don't have the OBS shit set up. I'm, I'm, I don't understand how to do one thing when it comes to, um, that's in the weeds, no one needs to know about it. But because of that, I'm doing these videos just with the webcam feature. But it would have been great to show you how these poems were set up because they were all set up different. And then, I mean, like even Nate, Oh my God. Someone just texted me saying they have COVID. Oh, oh. God damn it. Okay. So that's a whole other fucking thing. We won't talk about that. Okay. Um, I was not around the person I'm fine. Um, in case that was a thought. Um, in case you guys were worried about me and I'm just going to guess that you were, and you were about to ask because I know you guys really are definitely worried about me. I'm just kidding. Now I'm just fucking being fucking lame. Okay. But like Nate doing like 
how his poem was set up and how the rhyme scheme went and how it would go from like these many lines, this many lines, this many lines, this many lines. You guys all did it different. And that's what I thought was so fucking cool because like, yes, they were all different, but they all sounded different and they all looked different and composition to bring it back to the very top of this. We're going to be going over composition in the main class. And the thing about composition that's interesting isn't so much um, exactly like what you're like writing and how you're typing it and everything like that, but how the reader is going to perceive it. And you want to come up with ways to make what you're wanting the reader to read be as easily digestible as possible. And you don't want just like big fucking blocks. And again, we're talking poetry here. Big giant fucking blocks. You know, some people do do that. And it's fine if you do. But you don't need to do that. If you're wanting accessibility of your poetry to your readers, you want to make sure that you think with that in mind when you're writing. Like how... How is this going to look on the page to a reader? Is this going to be inviting for a reader to want to read? You know what I'm saying? And composition is like, I don't know if you could hear that, but composition is a big thing for people. Um, and I don't know how much love composition gets when it comes to what a page looks like. So we're going to be doing that a lot more in the um, main class. Now, before I end here, does anybody have any questions? Okay, so while, that, while, while we're thinking about that, here are your assignments. The first assignment, the world is your idea pit, okay? So when you go out, every person you see, everything you see, that is just there to give you ideas, Okay. And this will also help with your anxiety, social anxiety, agoraphobia, whatever. When you realize that when you go outside, it's just there for you to fucking get ideas from. And all of these people, you're not going out there as you. You're going out there as the creator. You're going out there as the mad scientist. You're looking for the ideas that are all around you. And it's just there for that. So that is just an outlook, like writing assignment. Like, you don't even have to write about it. That is just your outlook now. The second thing is to go through your slush pile, go through your idea folder, try to find anything, some things that you would like to cull from your mind, that you would like demons and spirits that you would like to exercise from inside, not exercise, exorcise, and try to put together some really small, short poems about those things. Um, and send those to me again. You can send them to I hate Matt Walt gmail.com. You could, um, oh, wait, no, no, I hate Matt Walt at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to leave them as a, in a comment once this video goes, um, uh, da, 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 replay mode, you could do that. Um, and all that stuff. And then, um, the last thing, what was the last thing? I don't know. We'll come back to the last thing. Maybe. Oh, to tell you what we're doing tomorrow. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Mindy says, I think it might be harder to make my ideas into four lines. How do you decide what parts to include? <clears throat> include whatever you want. And if you want to write six or seven different poems about different ideas you have or off of one idea you have, do that. Again, these writing prompts I'm giving you guys these prompts aren't what you have to do. It's just to get your mind flowing. If I say, give me a poem of four lines about one of your ideas, and you end up writing um, a 3,000 word short story about that idea, that's perfect. You did it. Good job. Um, all this is to do is to get you to get your brain moving, getting you writing, getting your ideas flowing. 
you are water. We want it to flow down your fingertips through whatever medium you're writing and have it appear. So again, I'm giving you assignments for you guys to fuck up because again, it's poetic anarchy, not poetic. Do exactly what I say. Okay. So do whatever the fuck you want, um, but do something. All right. Um, do I join the channel to get the main class? Um, yeah, and we're going to talk about that more on Friday, but um, basically after this week is done, because um, we're doing Monday, th Monday through Friday this week, after this class is done, how it's going to go after that is um, it would be the Anarchy crew in the join feature thing. And so every week there's going to be like a thing like this and an assignment. And then another point during the week, there's going to be um, a live stream where hopefully I could actually get like StreamYard set up or something um, and get all of the people who were in the class into the call. And then we're going to go over the stuff that you guys have put together. And so far I was counting today. Um, I have, because again, this class was originally um, a four-week class of um, two classes a day or two classes or whatever. Oh my gosh, Nathan, thank you for coming into the Anarchy Crew. You are awesome, my friend. But um, so far I have, um, oh wait, no, that's not it. Um, I have... 38 weeks of um, stuff here. So this is something that will continue and go on. And um, the videos will be there for you to always go back to and everything like that. Um, and then again, Anarchy Crew people get um, priority over um, anyone else who isn't doing that kind of stuff. But we're going to go through writing. We're going to go through poetry. We're going to go through short stories, through serials. We're going to do all this stuff, screenplays, if you want. Go through all this stuff. Then we're also going to go through publishing and editing and how to get your stuff in magazines, how to do all of these things, like doing self-publishing, walking you through self-publishing. Um, awesome. This has been really encouraging. I can't wait to learn more. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So thank you so much for joining, man. Um, but yeah, so there's going to be tons of stuff. And I'm going to be there to help you along the way as best as I can. Um, and again, through all of this, the Poetic Anarchy Volume 2 book is out now on Amazon. Um, I'm waiting for my fucking copies. I'm, I'm hoping to get them this week so I could fucking show you guys and go, look, look, here it is. Uh, but the Poetic Anarchy Volume 1 book, um, I will have that out tomorrow. I can't remember what bookcase it's on, and I'm not going to go looking for stuff right now. But um, So I will be showing you guys that tomorrow. And the Volume 3 will be out of this class. So everyone who's participating um, will um, be put into that. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be learning all sorts of stuff and kind of going over all this stuff and doing all that. Does anybody have any other questions here? Before I need another cup of coffee. Do you guys want to do some writing right now? Like how we did yesterday where like we did like a 10 minute like burst of writing and then we came back and talked about it. Do you guys want to do that? Let me know in the comments if you want to do that. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. And we could just um, come back tomorrow. Do, do. Do, 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 do. I've been having the I Dream a Genie song stuck in my head a little bit. I'm going to read um, a couple of the other poems that um, Sarah sent yesterday. Because um, I thought they were kind of fun. One is, I can find peace in chaos. I can find chaos in peace. I can make sense of the former the latter a condition of human disease. 
That's one. And then the other one was I've imagined myself in your shoes. They're too small. I'm not meant to wear your shoes. Thank God that fucking cracked me up. I was dying. I'll probably do some writing tonight. Okay. Um, so with that said, then we will, um, kind of cut this here. Um, and send me your stuff. And if you have questions about this stuff, guys, like if like the, the prompts are difficult or anything like that, just make a fucking list of your ideas and look at it and say, which of these ideas can I minimize? Which of these ideas should I expand? Like just think and do stuff. This is all this is supposed to help you with. Oh, Mindy joined the crew. Crew. Thank you, Mindy. Um, and we'll figure this out. Okay. And I'm here. So if you guys have questions about something, email me. All right. So until next time, everybody. Oh, tomorrow we are going to be going over the question I get asked more than anything. So that will be tomorrow's topic. So it is the top question I get. So until next time, everybody, you guys are awesome. You guys are doing great work. Keep it up. Type hard. Do the thing. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.